wonderful, beautiful animal ambassadors. Um, I have Soyala with me today, and believe it or not, we are talking all about great horned owls. Um, she is one of our wonderful animal ambassadors, so we're going to talk about her a little bit later in the segment, but we're going to talk about all her cousins out there in the wild. So if you guys have any questions, like always, just throw them in the chat box and just let us know and we'll hopefully have the answer for you as we go along. So this is our beautiful girl right here on this wonderful picture that we see. Now in San Diego, we do have about nine different species of owls that are either year-round residents or that they are just migrating through. Um, so some of the uncommon ones that you might not know are the short-eared owl and the long-eared owl. Um, they're usually so the short-eared owl comes in the winter time, but long-eared owls are around. We have the great horned owl, spotted owl, western screech owl. One that's not very common that we see is the flammulated owl, the northern sawwit, and the burrowing owl. But the four most common species we see here in San Diego are the western screech owl, the barn owl, the great horned, and the burrowing owl. And luckily for you guys, if you've been with us this entire time, you guys actually met Chuck, our western screech owl. We've met Boo, our barn owl. And today we are capping off our Wildlife Wednesdays with our beautiful great horned owl, Soyala. So we're gonna be focusing mostly on the great horned owl today. Now, the great horned owl is actually one of the most widespread owls here in San Diego and across North America. Here in San Diego, my friends, the great horned owl is the only owl that hoots. Um, if you remind me, we'll do a little vocalization later, but a lot of people think all owls make that noise. But here in San Diego, this is our only hooting owl we have. So if you hear that really common low, hoo, 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 that's actually the great horned owl. If anyone can remember, the western screech owl doesn't actually screech. They sound like the little ping pong ball, and the barn owl are the ones that are screeching through the night. Although these guys do have a wide range of vocalizations, those are just the most common noises that you usually hear from them. Now with great horned owls, these guys live in all types of areas from woodlands, scrublands, um, these guys can inhabit deserts, wetlands, forests, grasslands, backyard cities. Um, basically anywhere from the Arctic to the tropics. So you can see that these owls can be found all around North America, down into Central, South America, in Central America, North, Central, South America. Um, but these guys are awesome animals and very widespread. These owls are actually a owl of least concern, so they're not on the endangered species list, they're not threatened. However, we always want to help these animals out. We want to make sure that we're not cutting down their habitats. We want to make sure we're not poisoning their food. So we want to do everything possible to help our wonderful animal friend out. Now, great horned owls get their names from those lovely tufts of feathers. They're not actually ears. They're called, I hope I'm saying this right, plumicorns. And it's actually just feathers on the tops of their heads and they don't really know exactly what it does. There's a few different guesses. Some people think, some scientists think it's to help them camouflage, to kind of break up the, the, the shape of their head. Some people think it's the way that the boys attract the females. Um, so there are a few different guesses, but that's how they get their name, the great horned owl. Now, the ears are actually located on the sides of their heads. And one cool thing about owls is that their ears are not symmetrical. So they're not like ours where they're on the same level. One's a little bit higher and one's a little bit lower. And it gives them that wonderful range of hearing. So not only do they have great eyesight, but their hearing is remarkable as well. Um, their eyes, as you guys can see, are humongous. Look at this skull. Look at the size of those eye sockets compared to the size of the skull. So it's said that if we had eyeballs the size of great horned owls, our eyeballs would be the size of oranges. So I hope we're pretty glad that our eyes are not that big. But because of those large eyes, there's not many muscles behind them that allow them to move those eyeballs inside their head. So that is why owls have to be able to turn their heads almost all the way around. 
So it's not a complete 360 degrees that some people think. It's about 270 degrees. So let's say if Soyala was looking behind her, really quickly she could turn her head all the way back to look behind her from the other side. So when people first saw owls and started studying them, they did this so quickly that there was some idea that sometimes they thought the head would go all the way around. But that's not the case. It's almost all the way around. Now you and I have seven bones in our neck. Owls actually have 14 bones in their necks. And that is what allows them to have that great rotation. So because they can't turn, move their eyes inside of their socket, that is why they have to be able to turn that head around to hear their, pred to hear their predators and to hear their prey as well. So really amazing eyesight, excellent hearing. And this owl right here actually, they have the nickname of the tiger of the skies. Now, and that's a really great nickname because they are amazing hunters. I don't know if you guys can hear her. She's yelling at me right now. It's a very soft little squeal. Um, this girl rules the roost over here. So we're gonna let Soyala always make the calls as she wants to. Now, these animals are so efficient at hunting. So with their eyesight and with their hearing, so in complete darkness, they can hear a mouse stepping on a twig that is 75 feet away from them. Um, they're extremely stealth hunters, stealthy hunters. So if you take a look at their, their feathers over there, Daryl, that I have, they're super, super soft. And those soft feathers really help break up the wind. So some feathers on birds can be really tough and really kind of hard. And so when they're flapping their wings, they make that swoosh noise. Now owls don't make that noise. They have almost basically completely silent flight. And so that allows them to be able to sneak up on their prey. They're usually up in the trees and they'll hear something moving around, pretty much lock on exactly where it's at, swoop down to get it, and that prey will probably never even hear the owl coming behind them. Now great horned owls, have one of the most diverse diets amongst all North American raptors. So just imagine that. So I don't want to list off everything that they'll eat, but common rodents, rabbits, hares, these guys will go after gophers, voles, and moles. Um, one thing that they do happen to eat though, my friends, are skunks. Now, as you can tell with that, those eyes, those ears, there's not a whole lot of area for their nose. So a lot of one thing that people think where you say you touch a baby bird, mom won't take it back because they can smell that you touched it. Birds have a really poor sense of smell. They can't smell whether or not you touch that baby bird. And also, these guys will eat those skunks because they can't smell the skunk. So they're amazing animals to have around your neighborhood, around your house. Um, they're super, super strong. I don't know if you can pick up that talon, Daryl. It's on top of the, that uh, lovely display case. But that talon right there is just to show you how extremely sharp they are. And the talon strength that they have is incredible. Now, a really strong human and their hand pressure, it can be about 20 pounds of pressure per square inch. So that's like a really strong grip right there. Great horned owls. It's 200 to 500 pounds of pressure per square inch. So they can basically pick up something that weighs twice their body weight. So that is quite a remarkable feat for a bird to be able to do. So they're super strong. They have a voracious appetite. So they can eat all sorts of different mammals and they'll even go sometimes after insects and fish, um, bats, squirrels, uh, ducks, crows, ravens, uh, lots of other birds. And one thing I want to talk about, my friends, um, sometimes we don't always think of owls as a predator to our pets, but you really want to be careful because sometimes it has happened, but an unfortunate cat or small dog has come prey to a great horned owl. So not only do you want to always make sure you're keeping an eye on your pets when you let them out at night, keeping cats indoors, not only from coyotes, but also from owls as well. So this is called the tiger of the sky for, the re for a very special reason. So 
always want to make sure that we're looking after our pets ourselves, just because we want to make sure that none of the wild animals mistake them for food. Um, and then one other thing, it's not very uncommon to see them hunting during the daytime. Um, like I've mentioned some, with some of our other nocturnal animals, um, if you guys have ever gotten up in the middle of the night to grab a glass of water or maybe a midnight snack, owls will go and get that food as well at that time. So not super uncommon. And um, let's go to the next slide. So our owls are not, they're pretty much done nesting for our great horned owls. These guys are usually one of our earliest breeders. Um, they tend to make nests in, they tend to steal nests from other birds. So they'll go and use other hawk or raven's nest. Sometimes they'll make their nest um, in a tree, on a cliff ledge, um, maybe inside of an old uh, tree as well, maybe where some squirrels have made a nest as well. So they tend to steal nests from other animals. The pairs, the male and female, are monogamous, and so that means that they'll stay and they'll mate for life. Um, they'll usually keep coming back to the same breeding area if it's been successful for their babies in the past. Um, typically, our great horned owls are going to be breeding around and laying eggs around January and February. Um, two eggs is usually normal, so it, it tends to be one to four, and they are that nice kind of white shaped. It's a little bit spherical, uh, dull white, and it's kind of a rough surface. Incubation is done by both the male and female, so they'll both sit on that egg, but the male will usually do the hunting to come back and feed the female. So about 30 to 37 days, and then they're going to be, babies will be with their parents for about 42 days. Um, and in about 9 to 10 weeks, they're learning to fly. Now, one really common great horned owls into our care center is that they be for a range of reasons. So either the nest will be disturbed, or sometimes when they're learning to fly, they have to take that leap out to build up those muscles. Sometimes the drop down is not very pretty, and that is actually how we got Soyala. So Soyala came into our care center in 2009. Um, she was just a young little thing, still probably a, a, a nestling, so or between nestling and fledgling, and she had a broken wing. And unfortunately, her wing did not heal correctly. That would give her that ability to be successful in the wild. So because she was so young and we knew she was not going to be releasable, we were able to start working with her um, to have become one of our And so now she's going to be, she's 11 years old this year. Owls in the wild of age. Um, I think the longest known owl in the wild was actually, I want to say it was 20 years under human care almost 50 years old one of the great horned owls was able to get so so y'all has still got quite a few quite a few many years with us as well fingers crossed um like all of our ambassadors she gets breakfast in bed she's got a daily a daily maid service and a wonderful health care program so we're hoping that she's going to live nice and long with us um, unfortunately she's not going out and doing presentations to the public just because of all our covid everything um, but we're hoping that you guys enjoy getting a chance to see her up close and personal today. Um, if there's any questions, Ms. Dario, let me know. If not, we're going to talk about what's happening on Friday. We have our lovely Lovejoy back, and she's going to be teaching you guys how to paint this wonderful little mural. And you can use crayons, watercolor, paints, whatever you want. Just join us on Friday at 2 o'clock for that wonderful paint your pet with, or paint your mural with love joy. And then my friends, this is gonna be the end of our Humane at Home series. We may be coming back, but it's maybe gonna be a little bit less, maybe once a week versus three times a week. So we really hope you have enjoyed your time with us and learning from us. We have definitely enjoyed being with you guys. Um, it, it has been a very special time trying to get through and everyone staying safe and making sure that we're all staying apart from each other. Um, but if there are no questions, oh, we got a question. <laughs> how much weight can they lift? How, oh my gosh, how much weight can they lift? So these birds are typically can be about two-ish pounds. So probably anything less than that, probably up to four to five pounds. That's a great question. Um, but yeah, super strong animals. And these animals, very, very strong. So actually some owls can weigh up to five pounds. So double that as well. 
So those skunks better watch out, my friends, because these great corned owls are all around, and it's great to have a great horned owl around. If you do know you have a great horned owl around, or barn owls, or any of our animals that eat rodents, my friends, please, please refrain from putting out poison. If you poison the rodent, unfortunately, it can become a really great happy meal for this animal, and they can get sick by that poison too. So please try to look for other humane ways to encourage their departure. Prevention is key. Go around the house, make sure you're looking at any holes or openings that, and that rodents can get into the house. Close those up, and then if you have these animals around, it's your built-in rodent control. Um, again, putting up an owl box, you'll attract barn owls, but you probably won't be attracting these guys because they're a little bit too big to fit in those. Like I said, they'll take up nests from other animals. But I hope you all enjoyed Soyola today. Come back, my friends, on Friday to have enjoy Miss Lovejoy. If you ever have questions about sick or injured wild animals, please call us here at San Diego Humane Society. Go to the website, sdhumane.org. Um, tune in tomorrow for all of our day of giving efforts. That's gonna be our biggest day to raise some funds to help us out taking care of over 50,000 animals that come through our doors every year, my friends. But we've really enjoyed all of you. Thank you all so much for joining us and we will see you again on Friday. Thanks everyone.